Hey, welcome back to Snowflake Summit, everybody. My name is Dave Vellante, and we're here and really excited to welcome you to the great iceberg debate with George Gilbert and Sanjeev Mohan. Guys, thanks for coming back on theCUBE. I'm going to set it up, and then we'll get into it. So yesterday, as you know, we had an extremely enlightening conversation. This is something I posted on LinkedIn with a little bit more detail. We had Christian Kleinerman and Snowflake's visionary founder, uh, Benoit Dajaville, and what I called somewhat of a convenient truth hmm. is that it's really hard to actually create standards across all the compute engines Correct. from a governance standpoint and a catalog standpoint. So what Snowflake is doing is they're open sourcing Polaris, which is really just the technical metadata. So the somewhat inconvenient or the convenient truth for Snowflake is that the standards for governing open table formats like Apache Iceberg are not only lacking, but they're extremely challenging due to, you got to herd the cats of all the various compute engine players and, and agree and then align. Why would Snowflake take on something like that? So Snowflake, they're open sourcing Polaris, but if you want the, the, the governed yep. sort of catalog, you got to go to Horizon, you got to come back Correct. into uh, the Snowflake playground. Seems like a reasonable strategy. Yeah. Well thought out. What's your take on this? So, if you look at, uh, at Iceberg, Iceberg table spec, that's what it is. It's a table format. Does not specify certain things like permission. There are no permission, there's no security. Security has to be applied above uh, in, a, in a different catalog. So, uh, Iceberg, uh, so Snowflake actually provides this Polaris catalog, which is a technical metadata catalog, that's it. But if you want to do uh, RBAC, uh, row level security, column level security, you want to do that kind of stuff, you need horizon, that does not come. If you don't have a horizon, then every single compute engine, like if it's Spark or, or Dremio or Trino uh, or Starburst, they have to figure out how to apply uh, data access governance onto, uh, uh, onto Iceberg. So that's why Horizon is so important. So when Sanjeev talks about technical metadata, George, explain what that is and what's the value of that. Okay, so when you update a table, um, there's a data that says this is, this is all the parquet files that are in the table, these are the columns. Um, in that table, it's just really basic. It's a, a way to say all this, this collection of row groups forms a table, that's it. As Sanjeev said, you want, you want to know, you know permissions, that's somewhere else. You want to know the lineage, um, but the, the, the kernel that says the source of truth, what is the state of the table when you update it, when you, when you write to that table, that's the technical metadata. And so what I found out today was the reason why Polaris was open sourced is so that for iceberg tables, you can read and write um, independent of a catalog where in Unity, which is trying to have both Delta and Iceberg and, and Hootie support, they have not only the technical metadata, but all the other, the lineage, the, the permissions, all the things that are in Horizon. But, but they're bundling it. So, in other words, if you wanted to read and write to the open table formats, you had to take the entire Delta, the, the entire Databricks catalog. Now, by getting everyone to agree that Polaris or some other catalog is enough, then they can break that link. They can break that bundle. And then you're back to, are you in the Horizon family for all the, the richness? of governance or are you then into unity for all the riches? This is why I feel like it was a, a, a well thought out strategy. It's like let's compete on the basis of our product and let the customers decide. Now we should mention that just as Benoit Dajaville was getting on stage today, Databricks dropped the press release that they were going to acquire a tabular, Wall Street Journal reported it. It was, it was positioned as an AI announcement. We can talk about <laughs> whether or not that's, yeah. that's the case. We, we don't think it is. But the timing was you know, not coincidental. Correct. What, what, what was your takeaway uh, of that announcement in terms of its, what does it mean for the, the customer and but specifically for, for the sort of battle between Databricks so and Snowflake? I, I, I don't think this is a good move for the customers. 
I, in fact, had lunch with some very large companies, financial services, and they said we put our eggs in iceberg basket because we were getting an open standard file format, and now hoodie is actually not really uh, as uh, prevalent. There are only two, Delta and Iceberg, and they're both owned by the same company. And so that's, that's the, how the customers feel. Now the reality is that Iceberg, the bus has already left the station. It's open source, everybody is, is doing Iceberg uh, at this point. So uh, the question that begs is, well, how much impact does this have towards Iceberg if Iceberg has already been implemented? So George, your thinking on this is the, 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 what we sometimes call the six data platform is not just about separating compute from storage, that's what Snowflake popularized with cloud data warehouses. It's really about separating compute from the data. So any compute engine can operate on, on any data, and that's the, the vision that you've put forth. And so, how does that apply here? Okay, so, you know, we've had, on breaking analysis, we had Ryan from Tabular, who's the target of this acquisition. Right. And we did another show with Ryan and one of the um, architects of Starburst just recently on, on uh, Road to Intelligence. Uh, Ryan Blue. Ryan yeah. Blue. Yeah. So what, what the, the value they're trying to add now um, is I think it might be fairly straightforward or, or will be soon to be able to just read and write whether it's in Delta or Iceberg. There's a, the, the, the basic abstraction is, is the same where all the work that Ryan and the tabular group were doing was adding on the permissions um, and to go beyond just like authentication and row-based access control, they were trying to add a full policy engine, which is tag, this is the really advanced um, where you, where you um, control access to data based on its attributes. That's, that's the full-blown stuff. That's what they're building. And the, the whole point is, you can't separate compute from storage, as you guys were saying, until you put the security, but the security now, it's no longer enough just to say, are you allowed to access, you know, are you in this role? The, the, next, the next level is, can, do you, can you apply this policy? And that's, so the, I think what Databricks is buying is not just the table interoperability, but someone who's building a policy engine, because they tried to buy a Muta, but, but, okay, but so but to simplify it, you're basically saying w w to get that governance you, it, with Snowflake, you got to go to Horizon, Horizon. Where, whereas you're saying in theory with Unity you can bring that governance to the data even though they're both proprietary. Yeah. It's not a matter of open source or not, but isn't Unity built on top of Hive? So the question then becomes like how robust so, is that capability? So talking about Hive, uh, it, it just seems to me that we have regressed. We've gone 2013. back. Yes, so we is have. It, is it really on yes, Hive? Yes, it's built on Hive. Uh, yeah, well, well, I mean, well, I mean even, the, even the, if it is, they, they can port that. That's right, of course, uh, yeah. but it's a, that's so, the core, right? So, Am I right? Uh, it, so they, they took inspiration from Hive, but the situation that we are in now is a combination of Hive and Ranger. It reminds me of Redshift. Yeah. <laughs> so Hive and Ranger. By, by the way, just, just to clarify, there's, there are a lot of moving parts that are going on in parallel and they're not talking to each other. For example, uh, on stage today at Keynote, uh, Microsoft announced this bi-directional connection with Snowflake. They, they already announced it at Microsoft Build. Interesting, that's a shot yes. across Databricks bow. Right, yeah. so, so, but the question is, what is my, how is Microsoft doing this and what's the role of Polaris? But it's, this is what I'm saying, the, it's a separate project. And that project is, uh, you know, this, uh, the X table. Yeah. So what, what uh, happens is Microsoft Fabric is built on one lake which uses Delta, that's it. But when you, when you write something into Delta, then using one house, open source, Apache X table, they're converting the, the catalog entries into Iceberg. Yeah, so. And then that then can then that, read. That's the, that's the table abstraction. That's, that's so yeah, that everyone can read and write the table. But the, right. the, the next step is to take the, government, the security part right. and attach it to the, to the table. And right. that's what the tabular guys were building. That's what Starburst guys are building. And that's what today is in Unity and Horizon. But the, um, basically, I think what, what's um, 
Polaris was trying to break apart the technical metadata from Unity, but then um, Tabular and so, someone, the next effort is to, to apply security directly to the technical metadata, to grow it out of the technical metadata, and then Horizon and Unity would be value add you know, metadata uh, catalog. But normally this type of competition you would think is good for customers, but in this case I think you're right, it's, it's maybe not so good for customers because there's all these competing standards. Right. We, rem we remember well Hortonworks and Cloudera. Correct. Right? And so, yeah. and, and finally the market said, well, I'll just bring them together. Yeah. But it was too I, late, I, the cloud had already disrupted yes. them. How, how do these guys avoid that happening? But, but go ahead, make your point. Yeah, so I was just going to say, uh, by the way, there's also AWS Glue Catalog, which has also been adding features like, for example, one of the things that Catalog does is the Catalog doesn't just have the technical metadata, it also knows the statistics, so you can do query planning. Yeah, but then there's other metadata in data zones Right, so that's yeah. not unified. Which is like Horizon. <laughs> so Data Zone is like Horizon, Glue Catalog is like Polaris, and, and Unity is sort of in between. But, but you guys are, are all talking about the, the value add. They're, we're trying to solve first so that it doesn't matter what the table format is. Whether yes. it's X table or whether Ryan and, and the Delta guys fix what uniform was announced right. by Databricks. We're, we're going to fix the table interoperability, so it doesn't matter whether it's Iceberg or, or Delta, so, so you know, then it's what else are you adding onto that. Right, so I, I think there's a basic problem. The basic problem is, do you get interoperability with vendor lock-in or not? Um, but it dep Tim, depends what type of interoperability. Like, like if, the, if security is attached to the data, then then you have interoperability for the, the data policy and the governance, but you don't, then you go to the value add for all the lineage and the observability right. and the quality. So I think what's happening is there's going to be a base core that is growing all the time in capability. That, and but that wait, base core is, is, is that the, is, common, the but common. But is that at Polaris or is that at Horizon? Um, it cannot be at Polaris. It's not, yeah. um, Horizon is going to be the bigger value add. The, the, and what we don't know, um, Polaris. So Polaris cannot have security. No, well, it's not that it can't, it does not now. But, and, but and the thing. Databricks but, is, the, 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 what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that Databricks is trying to solve so that you can read and write Iceberg and Delta, and then the next thing that they can so, add is a so policy these, and these are two, security. These two orthogonal projects is what I'm saying. Yes. The X table, the cross uh, connection is one project, Polaris is a separate project, and right now nobody knows how these two projects will and, operate. And what Benoit uh, Christian said is you can't ignore, because I asked the question, irrespective of, the, t of the, the, the technology challenges, is it your intent to bring over that security capability, the governance capabilities to Polaris, and he said, you can't ignore the technical challenges. It's, you got to get all the, the engine, the compute engines to agree, and that's virtually impossible. So why do you think that Databricks is going to be able to succeed at getting that agreement? It's, because it's all integrated in it's, there. They're trying to add a policy engine. Um, Starburst is adding a policy engine. Um, Salesforce is adding a policy engine. That's the next thing beyond role-based access control. Right, so that's, it's more stovepipes. Um, Actually, no, because um, if you have a policy engine, then the thing you want to standardize on, just like metrics in the semantic layer, the tags on the data that says this is, you know, PII. And harmonize is, that. Okay. That, yes, if you yep. if you harmonize the tags, the policy engines respect that. Okay. So then it's it's who's going to add policy. I want to to share with something else. I said, I'm really curious to see how this plays out at the time. Customers want it all. They want openness, they want no lock-in, they want an integrated experience. Yep. They want the cake, they want to eat it too, and they don't want to gain weight. Right? <laughs> and, they and they want it to cure cancer. And they want it to cure cancer. So in my decades of following these markets, yeah. you may recall Unix used to be considered open. It was synonymous with open source. And so I feel like this discussion is just so advanced. But I, so Dave, I think this was another nail in the coffin of open source. That's my, my, because <laughs> just this year, how many open source uh, things, Redis, Terraform, uh, a couple of new ones I, I'm, I'm missing. The, the, so you just see this all the time that, you know, these open source. Get it absorbed, right? Yeah. And, and oh, actually, no, I know which one I'm thinking. It was this Kafka Connect, which became Benthos, and then Red Panda bought it just last week. 
took it out of. Hats off to IBM. They've done a good job with, with Red yeah. Hat. I, yeah. I would give them credit. But what happens to One House? Are they going to get acquired? By <laughs> <Snowflake>? <laughs> I, actually, I talked to One House today. Really? Yeah, I had a call with them, and uh, and they don't know. Like they, they, I don't think they knew this was no. This coming. is not. Yeah, yeah. A one house. A lot of people knew this was coming, but apparently. Uh, apparently, Snowflake was in the bidding. Oh, Snowflake was in the bidding. Coalesce was yeah, in the was bidding. there was a rumor that Snowflake was going to buy Tabular. Google right? Cloud. Oh, they all were. They were all in the bidding. Oh. Now they're nailing the coffin for open yes, source. Go well, ahead, yeah, George, give us the last you know, word. I, I wouldn't lament the, the loss of open source too much because the, you know, what, what we've seen from, from Amazon for 15 years was they expropriate open source projects and that the real value is in, in making the open source run as a service. And so this yeah, it's is a managed just, service, for yes, sure. Yes, this is the same thing here. But what we're trying to do is just make sure that the APIs are standardized. The APIs for how to tag data, the APIs for you know, how to define a policy for your data, and that's just growing. We're going to agree on the data table format, then we're going to agree on how to you know, tag policies, and then, you know, then we're on to the value add metadata. So right, we're, getting, we're getting thrown out of the, the, okay. the, the park here, so we got to go. Thanks you guys, really Thank appreciate you so it. Should be continued, yeah. this is a really yes. interesting conversation. All right, keep it right there. For more coverage, come, come see, the, go to thecube.net tomorrow, siliconangle.com for all the news. Go to thecuberesearch.com. My name is Dave Vellante for Rebecca Knight. We're out, we'll see you tomorrow. Snowflake Summit 2024 from Moscone. All right, thank you.